Okay, it's starting from zero again. The red yeah, red light's on. I'll, I'll time it and try to make sure we get it within a half hour. Okay. If you hear a ding, get back over there quickly and push it again. I didn't hear it do anything. Well, apparently, Rosanna did. Did you? Okay. Yeah, she heard it turn off. Good afternoon and evening, everybody. I'm St. Germain. Well, good evening. I'm so glad to be here and glad to meet everybody this evening and glad you've come. And I have some messages that I think would help you all in your spiritual growth and understanding. And it's a very interesting time in history. And so this information, I think, is very valid and very helpful to help you move on into your fifth dimension, which is already on Earth. The energy is here, and it's just a matter of you aligning with it. So tonight we're going to help you become spiritual beings, removing your human experience. Because the third dimensional energy is no longer sustained. And some of you might be having some very difficult times trying to push the old ideas to keep working, and they aren't working. And that can be very frustrating and can be very stressful. So as you might understand better tonight, how you can align your energy with the higher power of God, the loving force that is within you and always has been. In fact, that's who you are, is you are God's energy inside. Not just a piece of it, that is who you are completely. Your soul is the energy of God. And what we're telling you tonight is to help you to tune in to that higher consciousness that you were born within the spirit of the image of God. You might want to think of yourself as a radio, and you have been tuned into uh, a station which would give you the right information for what you needed at that time. It had a lower energy called third dimension, and it was lower on the radio dial. And at this point in time, it's time to say, well, that's not necessarily giving me the information I need. It's not working. It's not helping me. It's not helping me get where I want to be or where I actually am, but it's not coming together. And so it's time to tune your dial to a higher radio station. You might say you're going from uh, KVI up to KOMO. And so move your dial and your connection to a higher vibration of fifth dimension. And we're going to talk about the different parts tonight of your uh, system to help you do that. If you haven't have maybe had some of the answers of how to help that happen, hopefully we'll give you some answers tonight. As you know, um, the old energy came into, when you, Mac referred to this earlier tonight, that you came to Earth and the density lowered, and uh, as you got into deeper density, that became familiar, and of course, I've talked about this in several past channelings, uh, you stayed in third dimension mostly because you were conditioned and the surrounding uh, environment kept fo forcing and focusing on fearful experiences to keep you in third dimension. And now that that fearful energy is no longer sustained, it's time to become fearless. And it's possible to do. And it's a matter of rechanging your mindset. You see, in third dimension, the mindset was that you grow old and you are limited in your uh, abilities to do certain things, my limitations. Well, I'm here to tell you today, in God, there is no limitation. And your mindset can change into that of being a loving force because perfect love casts out all fear. You do not have to come from fear ever again. And as you know, uh, the ego reinforced that fear. So we're going to help you to release that ego today. As some people say, ego is edging God out. We're going to merge God in. We're just going to replace it. Let it be old go, and we're going to help you see in different parts of your life how that can work. To do this, it's really important to understand a few things. This third dimension was really not um, 
was not reality. Some people called it an illusion or um, a fantasy. Some people have seen it as a mirage. Um, some people even called it a dream. And if you remember the song, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, Gently Down the Stream, Merrily, 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 Life is But a Dream. However, Third Dimension was a nightmare more than a dream. But it was an illusion. And if you do row your boat down the stream, that means you're aligned with God and you're moving in the right direction and it can become a dream. So tonight, hopefully, maybe some of your dreams can come true because you are going to cooperate with the energy of the universe. Some of you, and this is very human, um, just keep moving, 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 like um, a moving target because you don't get hit if you're moving. And it's called survival. And many people on the planet have been uh, overachievers, workaholics, and they're very, very busy from morning till night, never admit it for, for uh, meditation, to slow down and fit their rhythm into the rhythm of the universe. They're going so fast, it's like they're pulling God to catch up with them. And some people seem to go so slow, they're dragging their feet, and they can't even get close to what the rhythm of, of the universe is. And the procrastinators and other people that have various ways of dodging and hiding from life um, are not in the of the flow and the rhythm of the universe either. So coming into the middle is very important. Uh, you're no longer uh, fighting God or, or running from reality, but it's time to embrace God and the reality is deep inside of you that you need to embrace. And it's just been covered up by the fears that have been uh, foisted on you through the news and the media, the violent movies and the violent books and all the uh, scary things that are out there that they keep uh, creating as far as uh, politics and government, etc. So all those things were meant to keep you from being in the middle and not being in the flow of the energy that is the truth of who you are. Um, I will, to do the, to, to get to the center and to be in where you really truly want to be aligned with God, so your energy flows and goes before you to smooth your path, and that's the wonderful place to be. And and to do that, it takes faith. Now everybody has faith in something, but what do you have faith in? And so many people still have faith in the, the material world that their visual eyes can see. And that means they might have faith in their job because it pays the bills. They might have faith in their uh, family, uh, hanging on to their family for reasons of insecurity possibly, uh, or whatever validation that was missing in their growing up, or whatever reasons that they have in that situation. Some people are very focused in on medicine to cure them and help them and heal them. And all those are third dimensional manifestations of their mindset from the ego. So it's time to say, I'm ready to choose my mind, to change my mind to what is actually and really in my best interest and where I wanted to be all along. You see, you can manifest health, you can manifest self-empowerment, self-esteem, and all those things that you don't have if you're looking for others to give it to you. you. You don't even have to look outside of yourself to be saved because as you change inside, as you heal and, and purify your soul, you are saved. You've never really been lost. You've never been separated from God. That's the illusion. There is a book called um, uh, a parenthesis in time, and it was it's explaining that we always have been eternal spirits, having different experiences in, in various ways of our existence, but for a short period of time, we've decided that we would like to see what it would be like to be separated from God. 
and that's what Earth was about. But see, you never really were. It was just a, you might say, a game, and the game's over. So we're going to move out of that parenthesis of time where, where we saw what it was like to not have love in your life. To be separated from God is painful, and the medical problems are just manifestations of separation from God. In God's energy, all things are healthy and alive and prosperous, abundant and secure and safety, and there's all kinds of serenity. And life flows together easily down that Merrily River, Merrily River. So you see, it was just in your mind. And so we're going to first look at your physical and then mental, emotional, and spiritual parts of your life to see how you can align them to the fifth dimension, which is where the planet is, and you will then be aligned with the Spirit of God, which you've already very much in your lives today, or you people wouldn't be here talking about this, but there's always more work to be done. It seems like it's a forever job, and so there's still maybe some things that to look at. And in this case, physically, if there's any physical problems that have arisen, they're just a signal. They're just a signal where there's a separation from God, because as you move closer and closer into God's consciousness, you are not going to be sick anymore. It's a matter of changing your mindset, which we'll talk about in a minute. So when you identify the ills of what's going on, the only one that can make you sick is you. There's no way to catch a cold. It's if you have let your immune system run down, if you have not kept in touch with your spiritual basis, if you think you will catch it, there's the mindset again, you will. But you know, you can also say, no, I don't get, I don't choose to catch colds. I don't choose to have such and such. Uh, you know, Marilyn knows she won't ever have cancer. She was told spiritually that wasn't going to happen. And of course, she's not going to sabotage it and bring it on by having fear that she might catch it. What you fear is what you attract. So if you are fearful of an illness, I would suggest that you embrace God and let the, let the fear leave. It's, the illness is only a signal. It's only a red flag. It's only a get your attention to say something needs to be lined up with God's energy. And when and how can I do that? Well, meditation is a marvelous time to do that. To ask God what is the answers that you need for this situation. And if you're really listening, the answers will come. It takes time to sit down and do the meditation and to be in that space to hear the right answers. And sometimes there are counselors that can help you identify it through regression or other means of helping you to understand. So readings and tarot readings and things like Marilyn does is very helpful to identify those things you can't seem to get to be touch base with. But it is possible to identify them and to work on them in a way where they will leave because Perfect love casts out all fear, so you replace it with the love of God. Um, and you will actually find yourself healthier when you have more and more love in your life and less and less fear. And stress is only brought on by your thinking, thinking you have to do it all at once, thinking it has to all be done right now. So we're going to move to the mind instead of the physical showing that when you seek God, the healthiness will come, the abundance will come, God's grace is sufficient. When you seek first the kingdom of God, all things will be brought to you. And so if you are satisfied with God being first in your life, you don't have to focus on the illness because that just makes it even worse. All you do is you start to focus on the wellness and the healthiness and the well-being that you were created in and just let that come back into your life. You were healthy at one time, you focus on when you were healthy and say, now I am returning to my appropriate health and well-being. It's a, called uh, gratitude before it happens. You know that that was your birthright. You know that you've had those situations and you're grateful for them. And guess what? Your gratitude will help return it. That you have had healthiness in those situations before and you will again. It was just a... Uh, small time where you thought you were sick. 
and it, it looked and appeared as you were sick, but now you're looking inward rather than outward, and you can see the healthiness within you, and that's going to manifest. You see, your inside consciousness will manifest and create your reality. The mind is a very uh, interesting uh, thing to talk about because so many people confuse the mind and the brain. So we're going to move from physical into the mental, uh, aligning with God. Um, the, the mental part of your thinking comes from the brain. And the brain gives you messages and automatically you're so used to it over the years you just jump in and handle things so often like you've done before or you were taught to do or everybody around you did so you did fall suit. Guess what? You can think for yourself today. And when these old messages come up and you recognize them, you're aware of them, they're talking to you and they're saying these things and you can say, hmm, is this helpful or is it not helpful? Does it support the life I want today? And if it doesn't support positive, healthy um, behaviors and attitudes, then you can fire your brain. You can fire the voices in your head that have lack of constructive ideas going on and you don't have to follow through with the behaviors. Um, there was a wonderful show years ago called A Beautiful Mind. And the uh, fellow in the, was the st true story of an award-winning Nobel Pe uh, Peace Prize winner. And he was a mathematician and was winning his prize for his mathematical formula who had paranoid schizophrenia. And throughout the show there is experiences and episodes of his paranoia coming into his mind. And they were harrowing experiences. And yet he was able to function as a mathematician throughout these illusions that were going on. And at the end of the show he became a very peaceful, calm person and, and very pleasant. And someone said, well, what do you do differently today? And he said, I fired the voices in my mind. That tells you how much impact your thinking has. Also, you need to know that thoughts are things and you can change your thoughts to produce different consequences, different answers and results. So, if you have a belief and it's not working for you, change your belief. It's just an idea and you can change ideas. Ideas can be changed as quickly from negative to positive as you choose to. Uh, just takes your awareness that you're saying to yourself, I can't do that, and say, oh, well, can't separates me from God, so I can do that with God, I can do all things. So every morning, one of the things Marilyn says is, God, there isn't anything God and you and I together can't handle today. She always includes God. If you include God in whatever you're doing that day, there won't be stress, there won't be problems like you've had in the past, you won't have the difficulties because you have not tried to force your solutions through your ego and your old mindset. You have released it, you've fired it, and now you can move into your heart. There's only 18 inches from your ego and the, and the brain to your heart. So when you move out of your head and into your heart, you are sending out love to all those things you do that day and the people you see the experiences that you're involved with. And you see, it's very important to know that with God, all things are possible. So there isn't anything that can't be accomplished if you're doing it in the flow of the universe. You don't have to do it all at once. You just say, okay, what's the first thing today I need to do? And focus on that, not your list of 20 items, but just the one that's the most important one. You know, principles of, of the what's first in your life and most needing to be handled. And then just when that gets accomplished, you go to the next one. And little by little, the list will get resolved exactly when it's supposed to get resolved. It might not be when you thought it would get resolved. 
this teaches you patience, but it also takes away stress. And so as you're letting God lead the show, and you and he are doing it together, you're cooperating with the universal energy. You're lining up with it. You're not fighting it or trying to do it without God. See, when you feel good, God is helping you and in your life. And if you don't feel good, that's your indication that you're trying to do it without God. So without God, you're going to have some miserable days. So it's a matter of inviting God back in. You can invite him in any time. It doesn't have to be morning, noon, or night. It can be whenever you realize, oh, oh, this isn't going very smoothly. I must be trying to do it without God, without God's love to help smooth the way. And just say, God, please help me. I need your help for this. Here we go again. And, um, you know, then start over, and you'll see how much easier it is for you. So your mind is always focused on God throughout the day and when you're resting. Just put, relax yourself into the arms of God at night and know that you are well taken care of. And if your mind is the mind of God, the brain is just like a computer, but the mind of God is actually your soul, surrounds you as your soul is not inside. And when you're lined up with that energy, the mind of God, you have the mind of Christ Jesus. And that's the Christ consciousness that we're working for towards in the fifth dimension. So it's just a matter of little by little identifying those things that separated you from that thinking that all is good. If it seems things are out of order, then try to put them into order. God is good orderly direction. Things that are going to be out of order as you travel through life, it's a matter of putting it in order. If you have unfinished business, take care of it. If you have repairs in your house or car or equipment that you use and hasn't been repaired, get them repaired. All things have to work and flow together as if they were brand new and repaired. And anything that isn't lined up with that energy, it's broken down and it, it's going to cause difficulty in your life. If your house is in disarray, then put it in array and make the energy align with God. Good, orderly direction. Um, so if we've covered physical, we will talk about mental. You can change your mind at any time. Just go move out of your head and into your heart. And what is the most loving thing that you can do for yourself and those around you? And some of you beat yourself up so much, my gosh. It's time to give yourself a break and say, I am a child of God and there is nothing wrong with me. Everything is happening right now exactly as it's supposed to be happening. And I'm not going to fight it or try to change it. This is exactly what's going on and it's okay. This too shall pass. And guess what? If when you quit fighting it, it doesn't become a problem anymore. It just seems to go better. So don't fight your problems, embrace them and let God in on them so that they can smooth out. Um, as you get into your emotions, this is a very tricky one because most people don't understand emotions. And that's because they have not understood that emotions are energy, they are who you are. They're the energy that's going through you energy and emotion. Emotion is energy and motion. So if you've had fears you've been afraid to feel, just know it's not that you're bad for feeling whatever it is. It's just energy. And if it comes up to be felt, say yippee skippy, it's coming up to be left, let out, to be released out into the universe to be purified. This fear is coming up and now I can feel it and let it go. So often people have inflated the fears in their life to be bigger than they really are. Um, when Marilyn put herself in the arms of God and, and went up in that roller um, Ferris wheel at the Seattle waterfront, it was like, where'd the fear go? When you have faith, there is no fear. And you can't have some fear and some faith. Some people say, well, it's like you can't be half pregnant. So if you have faith, and you have just a little bit of faith, it's time to let it grow. 
and it's time to say, well, this little bit of faith made things better for me. I let God kind of handle the results, but I wasn't sure, so I hung on to a little bit of what I wanted, and then realized that if you put out 20% faith and you get 20% better results, why not put out 50% faith into God and let God handle 50% of the results, and by then you're going to say, well, this is foolish. I'm just going to trust God completely because his results are better than ever I could thought, think of. So, you know, you can't have two masters. You can only have one. And I want to give you an example of how that works. Think of yourself as being on, riding on a horse. And it's trotting down the road. And now you have two horses. You have the reins of one horse in your hand and you're standing on the back of that horse. And this other horse has now come up and you're standing one leg on one horse and one leg on the other horse and you have the reins in your hand and you come to a fork in the road. What are you going to do? Put your one foot on with the horse that you feel is going the right direction and put let the other horse go off in the distance without you and you have just made total faith in the one horse. You've put all your faith in the one horse. What would happen if you tried to stay on the two horses? It would have been disaster. You cannot ride two horses. So put all your faith on God. Don't try to do half measures. Half measures will avail you of nothing. It will tear you in half if you try to stay on two horses going two different directions. So you put all your faith on God, knowing that whatever emotion is coming up, it's leaving. This is one of the answers to mental illness that people have yet to understand. Those feelings have to come up and leave. And when Marilyn was releasing some of the mental illness feelings one day, she said to herself, yippee skippy, it's finally going. I don't have to have this in my life anymore. Yay. Those feelings are just leaving your system. They're just energy. They don't make you good or bad or terrible or awful. They're just energy that have been hidden inside and are finally ready to come up and say, adios, let them go. Don't stuff it. Don't try to, you know, this is what people eat to stuff their feelings. People drink to stuff their feelings. Just let the feelings come up. And they aren't as big and tremendous and traumatic as you might think. They generally been exaggerated by the ego and when you start to let the feelings go it can be usually very quickly oh all of a sudden you'll feel so much better and the energy will have shifted so feelings are a wonderful red flag that actually it's time for that energy to happen and to let it happen um, You see, it's, it's very important to understand that you probably have let your feelings run your life instead of God's love run your life. And when you realize they're just energy that you are releasing and it's don't react from the fear, but respond from love to whatever is going. Love yourself enough to let you feel the feelings because love will dissipate the fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. So love yourself through those experiences, it really means you're getting healthier. Yay! This is what you wanted in the first place. Most people are going to There it goes. So as you have released your energy from the fear, guilt, shame, realize those were just energies from the past and they kept you out of living in the now. So the freedom comes from being fearless. You are free of the past and you can now be in the presence of God. You feel good, you feel secure, you feel safe, you feel prosperous, you feel abundance in your life. Let those old feelings leave because you're releasing your limitations to have it all. Now that's a bonus and a reward everybody would like. So know that that's what's happening. You are just open to receiving God's grace in all ways that it comes to you. The last part is, is the spiritual part that so many people um, 
and you in this room, I'm talking to the choir, but you understand the invisible is the power. There is only one force in the universe. That force is God. That's the only power there is. And if you focus on fear, if you focus on ego, or whatever messages that come from the ego, you're giving it power. So to quit focusing on those other old ideas, you're actually giving away your power. So only focus on the true and only power there is, is God, and then, and as Rosanna asked earlier tonight about giving power away to those people she's around, if she's only focused on her higher power, her God, there is nothing that can harm her. She is in truly God's arms. She is safe and not possible to, to, to hurt her, and she's not allowing it. She's staying in her empowerment. It only can hurt you if you think it can. So if you stay empowered and you stay in that stance of, of the focus of, of one power only, this is really what the Lord's Prayer is about. So to stay focused in the God within. And that is truly being vulnerable. 100% open your heart and let that energy of God flow out to others. They can't hurt you when you send love to them. That is the most beautiful place to be because you are safest sending love to someone else. There's no way they can hurt you when you send love. If you're sending out attacks by from your fearful defending yourself, that's like a dart to them and they're going to retaliate. But if you send love, there's nothing to retaliate. They can't hurt you. So just pray for those that are in pain and suffering and ill, have dysfunction, have addictions, are causing wars and crisis and, and terrible problems in government. Pray for all of them. That's the answer. We send out love to everybody. That's the safest place you can be. And what happens to the darkness? It obliterates it. When you walk into a dark room and turn on the light, where is the darkness? And that's fifth dimension. The more love you send out, the faster fifth dimension can happen in a way that will be not only uh, out of your view, but into your actual lives where the media and the other laws will be changed and all kinds of search circumstances will start to occur to show you that the loving energy you've been sending out is finally coming back to show you what wonderful rewards it will bring. And it will dissipate all that darkness out there from the fear and you will walk into a new age of love and forgiveness, compassion, unconditional love. And you see, when you are in joy and you are in gratitude and you are in the presence of God, that's, we've come home. And it feels so comfortable, so pleasant and relaxed. And the, your society has kept you so busy and so threatened that you can't relax. So whatever you do that helps you to relax, you will accomplish this even quicker. And if it's a, a bubble bath or a hot tub or a good hot shower or a massage, whatever, go for a walk out in the woods, whatever helps you to relax. Some people like to go to the ocean. Some people like to listen to very pleasant music. All of this will help you stay in your spiritual realm and to help you to stay relaxed so instead of reacting in your old ways of handling life, you are now responding in love. And you are bringing peace on earth to everyone because it starts with you. Mm. Now we would like to share um, one last thought. And it has escaped me. Um, Oh, what we would like to share is when your spiritual dilemma has been resolved, your physical and mental will come into being healthy and appropriate. So you see, it all starts with seeking God first. The rest will come together at the right time and the right place. I hope this has been helpful to help your spiritual growth tonight. 
You see, it all comes from your taking responsibility for how you think and how you feel and how you handle your life. Responding in the love of God is always the answer. I hope you have a nice, pleasant evening and enjoy the life that you are creating as it is getting better and better. My wishes to all of you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. You want to start a new one for Ariel? Yeah? Push it again. Yeah, you got John on one and St. Germain on one. Now, if we push it again, it'll start a new one. Mm -hmm.